Hi everyone, my name is Maxie Taylor and I'm a community liaison and business strategist consultant in Mesquite, Texas. And I am here for our community council policy workshop recap. So basically this past Saturday, um, I went to the workshop. It was from 8 a.m. until exactly 3 p.m. There were little times where I thought, oh, we may make it. We may get there early. We may be able to leave an hour early. But then there would be another segment that would take up time. So um, I'm just excited to go through. Some people said they didn't have the full hours that I did to go through everything. So I'm just going to give a recap of each department. Um, I thought it was really informative. So this is going to be somewhat informative, um, somewhat quick, but I just want to um, just, you know, give you all a little bit of information. So a little bit about who I am. I am a community liaison, and basically I connect people to products, services, things within the city, um, expanding to more products just globally. Um, my mission is to connect, engage, and inspire, connect the community, engage with them, help them figure out their wants and needs, and inspire them to get involved, give back, find the resources that they need um, to just help them to take that next step. So. I'm a wife and mom of three um, and a full-time business owner. And I was born and raised in Mesquite, moved away for about 10 years. And so now I'm back. This is my second year back. So I'm not somebody who's not a native. I'm not from California. Um, I've heard that I am born and raised in Mesquite, Texas. Um, this is my home. And um, just to be back, I've lived all across the country and there's no place like home truly. So I am a super proud Texan, a super proud Mesquitean or a Skeeter. That's still up for debate, but um, very serious about my community. I absolutely am 100% passionate about it. So we're going to get started. The first picture you're going to see is of course our city manager cliff kahili he starts off um this city policy workshop just giving a recap of what our goals have been um and he's pretty straightforward so um he just kind of let us you know basically get started the model of success this is a good idea for you to get when you want to figure out how things work kind of within the city um, some people say, you know, well, I have a problem or this and that and the other, but they don't necessarily know who to report to or what happens after they report it. Some people think there's like an instant, like change is going to come, which yes, change, we want it to be fast. Um, but there is a, kind of a model, I guess, a model of success that they go through, which starts with the policy goal analysis and development. So the problem, what they're looking to change, what they're looking to grow. That's the policy and analysis part. And then we go into policy and goal prioritization. Um, and when you're looking at that, that essentially is like, what is our issue? We're going to do um, a SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. What are we looking to obtain with this new policy or this new goal? And what things, what priorities should we put them in when we're displaying them, right? So the next one is the strategy presentations, when we start figuring out how we're going to get this done, the meat and potatoes of it, the, the plans for the days, weeks, months, and years to come. That's in those strategy presentations. Budget allocations, once we have whatever business plan, policy plan, goal prioritization plan, we're going to set a budget. How much does this need? Do we need to raise the money? Where does the money come from? All of those things. And then once we have the plan as well as the money, boom, we're going to execute that program and bring it to fruition. So that is kind of how it goes. I thought that was really important to put in here to kind of give you an idea of how um, things happen, our model of success when we're looking for our goals and our issues and how the city works about getting those changed. So everybody say, hey, mayor, to the left. Everybody say, hey, Cindy, to the right. So our mayor is going to kick it off after our city manager. Um, of course, he's a man of God, so he's going to lead it in with prayer, of course. Um, and then just kind of set the tone for us and let us know that we're here. We're going to hear from the council. We're going to hear from different departments and kind of just have a strategy session. It was really good to hear how people thought, how people bounced ideas off of each other, and how they just directly asked questions. So it was great. So that's our mayor, Mr. Dan. 
Love him. He's an awesome guy. Um, Miss Cindy's over there. Miss Cindy is over finance. So we're about to get into finance. Miss Cindy is also a Leadership Mesquite alumni. She graduated last year. So I was able to see that graduation. And that is kind of what made me think I want to be a part of Leadership Mesquite. So um, very briefly, Leadership Mesquite is a leadership program within the city of Mesquite um, designed to help you get a immersive experience with the city, how things work, different programs that they have available um, because you are a leader and they expect, you know, when they invest in you, that you'll be investing in the others and researching and networking and all that good stuff. So Cindy was last year's. I'm in this year's, so though. That was awesome. So boom, we're going to hop into it. Cindy's very thorough. So if you do have time to go back, just listen to her talk because, I mean, she just has a wealth of knowledge. But the, basically the three drivers, um, the three things that they really look at in our finance department is revenue, expenditures, and our debt. I think those are three good drivers pretty much for everybody to be looking at right now. What am I making? What's coming in? What are we spending money on? How much debt we have? Those are all good things to look at. So I'm glad the city is looking at it like we're looking at it with our checkbook. So that's pretty awesome. So um, I didn't put a lot in there because Cindy is so one thorough, but so well versed. And this was something that I did not want to chop up. But the city of Mesquite does a great job with transparency. So you can go to city of Mesquite dot com. You can find our financial reports. They have something called open checkbook. Like you can see how much people are getting paid. Like literally our city does a awesome job when it comes to transparency and what they put online. So you can go there if you don't want to hear me chop this up. But basically um, the things that they look at, like I said, revenue, expenditures and debt. But although I didn't want to chop it up, I did want to put at least their strategic summary in there because these were things that I was able to remember off of the meeting that we had. So their financial initiatives, they first want to diversify the revenue sources. Um, everybody, I just, you know, the warehouse city is what they're calling it. But I've been to a few economic development meetings and all these other things. And those warehouses, one, are sitting pretty leased right now, even if they're as of 125, 2023 today, even if they're not um, all the way put up or if they're not all the way done being constructed, like they have a really good leasing rate. Like they are getting leased up and the projection of the amount of money between sales tax and stuff that it's going to bring us like in the millions, like hundred millions, you know? So please don't quote me on that, but almost I think a hundred million because overall, they're going to bring more income, which is one thing that we need to do, diversify our revenue sources. Another thing, one-time income versus recurring revenues. How can we create residual income um, in our city to continue gaining income? Looking at one-time costs versus costs that we have to consistently pay over and over and over again. It would be great to nip some of that. But there's not a lot of nipping that we can do. We do a really good job of putting money in the programs and services. So I don't necessarily think that's the solution versus looking at reoccurring revenues and diversifying our income sources. So that's one thing that I would be thinking about, like um, in a different department or in council, like how can our city diversify our income? What can that look like? So I have like two or three good ideas, but I would love to hear from everybody else. Um, so we're go is to look at sustaining strong financial health. Our barriers are our financial policies, things that are made on the state level and the federal level that are above our head. Of course, the increased cost and our debts. Um, I didn't put that one in there as well, but there are going to be um, maybe within past the next few years or so, our debt is going to increase, but that is going to be from the roads and all of the stuff. Um, that they will be fixing also within the next few years as well, the development of South um, Mesquite. So we are going to see an increase in debt, but they're already planning for it. They already kind of know it's coming. So I think we're, we'll be in a good spot. You know, our challenges are skill um, workforce, economic indicators, balancing the budget, growth and aging infrastructure. These are things that we all know is a challenge, you know, but um, just increasing our skills. You know, we have wonderful schools, wonderful programs um, that can really, really help um, set our kids 
uh, for a good start, um, as well as like economic indicators, look around at the economy around us. You know, none of us are psychics, so we can't really predict all the way what's going to happen. Um, but I think they're doing the best that they can to get the right things in place. That way, if and when things do happen, we still have other income coming in and getting generated. That way it won't be such a pressure on our residents. You know, growth, you know, there's only so much land, you know, there's a certain way we have to do things. There's a certain way our residents want things done. And, you know, aging infrastructure, the roads and stuff. Nobody likes construction. Nobody likes crappy roads. So it's kind of a double whammy, but it is things that they're looking at and that they're planning for, which really makes me kind of um, okay with, you know, happy to know that, you know, they do have a plan for those things in place. So after Miss Cindy sat down, this is our police chief, Chief Gill, and he is going to talk about crime in the city of Mesquite. Um, depending on who you are and what side of the line sometimes you may lay on. Some people think crime is rising in our area. Um, some people think that, you know, our police are doing a great job and that, you know, they're quick on crime. People hate the helicopters, you know, all of the things, all of the things, right? But Chief Gill is going to do a really good job. I really encourage you guys to go back and listen to it for these hours. I know it's a lot of Q&A, but just at least go and look at the notes because it has all of the numbers and the figures in them. Um, but he talks about different crime. They break it down literally month by month by month in the city of Mesquite. And so they talked about rape. They talked about burglaries. Um, I put in here the ones that I thought were important. They're all important. Um, but I put the ones in there that I really wanted to get to. Aggravated assault. Um, back to aggravated assault. Aggravated assault, sorry, um, has increased. Um, one thing that... Um, they were able to say they didn't have the exact statistics on it, but they saw that teen dating violence um, was partial to the increase, you know, domestic violence. Um, and so one thing that I asked him is, you know, teen girls getting bullied. I've had a few cases of moms that I've been reaching out to or who have reached out to me and we've been trying to find a solution with the bullying, um, with the young ladies fighting each other. Um, and having to be sent off to alternative school and all of these other things. So he did say he saw an increase, especially with the young girls fighting. He didn't see it nearly as often with the boys as he did the girls. So that is kind of something that's concerning to me. I would love to see more programs in the schools um, to partner with these young ladies because they're going to become adults one day. And, you know, you can't put your hands on each other as an adult and not face serious consequences, you know? So I'm one of those people who used to fight as a teenager when I was bullied, but there were a lot of other external factors going on. And so I think taking that time to get involved with them can make a difference, you know, because they'll turn out surprisingly quite well and opposite of what you may think. So that was interesting. That's why I put that one in there. <clears throat> the next one was the weapons law violation. Um, I thought this one was super important. As you all know, um, Governor Greg Abbott recently changed some gun laws. You can research those for yourself, but um, it made access to guns much more easier. So we have seen a uptick in these weapon law violations. So that is something that I think is super important, creating an initiative if people get new guns, safety, um, there's a guy named Alfonso Solis. I don't know. This may age well, um, but Alfonso Solis, he is a active shooting and self-defense trainer, um, our first responder trainer. He teaches um, gun protection, all that good stuff. Sorry about that. But um, just having classes that teach gun safety, I think would be one way talking to parents about how to lock up their guns and stuff. Well, you know, because it does see an uptick in our city, in our community. So that's something to be mindful of.
the SAFE program. So they have put things and initiative in place to be proactive, which I can appreciate. So this is kind of going to go into that one. Um, and if you have questions about car thefts, we're going to hop into that one really quick too in a second. But the SAFE program, if you live in an apartment complex, you can ask your apartment complex, are they a part of the SAFE program? Or what are their plans with the SAFE program this year? And um, if not, could they? are they interested in getting involved? So they do background checks. If they're part of the SAFE um, program with the city, they agree to do background checks on all employees, all potential tenants. Um, they put in something in the lease addendum that explicitly says like criminal activity is not okay. You know, um, they have cameras, they do all of these things to say, Hey, we're working with the city. Hey, we have a community watch group. Hey, this community, this apartment complex is active and has a zero, um, zero policy, 0% 0 policy to crime and foolishness. So, the SAFE program is something to ask your community if you live in. Another thing they did was laid out business ordinances when they saw a uptick um, in robberies. So as you can see, kind of near the top area, that window is super covered. You got all of the nice plates of what you can order in there, but you can't see inside. You can't see if the merchant is getting robbed. You can't see if there may be a stick up going on. So what they did with the ordinance that said the window has to be clear enough so we can see inside. And then also the placement of your cameras. Um, they wanted to keep it normally where you could see the cash register, make sure no one was stealing their money. But as a robbery was happening, all they could see was the cash register, hands going in and hands going out. So that's not very helpful. So that is um, a few of the things that they've done. They have some crime initiatives. One thing that they're really focused on is vehicle crimes. Thanks, TikTok. But right now, <laughs> there's a certain type of car that is super easy to steal. Um and the theft of vehicle parts and accessories has become common again. So that is something that they're working towards. They're continuing to focus on weapons crimes. We all know that um, at least eight guns have been found within the city of Mesquite. And so just to be proactive there, they're working on just Cosmo is one thing that is our um, gun and drugs dog. He's able to sniff out, you know, guns and all of these really, you know, unique things that should not be on campus. So sorry, just need to charge my laptop up. Um, so they're doing things like that and then um, changing it to have more positive interactions with young people. I think that's super important. They have another um, initiative called 13M. It's where high crime areas that normally they would maybe go out for a call for, they finish up their police report there or they park their car there and have interaction with the community, positive interaction with the community. You know, like that is the intent to have and create positive interactions with the community. So I'm not mad at that. You know, at the end of the day, they want to go home safe to their families. We want to go home safe to our families. We don't want to be policed in an odd way in a minority majority community. And I think they understand that. And so they're literally proactive. We have our Mesquite Police Department gets way more hours um, like 2,200 hours versus like the regular 800 that the state requires, you know, just taking that extra step. Um, and then they also do things like health and wellness training and stuff. And they're really working on, you know, making sure that their police officers mental is also okay. Cause they see a lot of stuff y'all. So there was even a police officer, um, who unalived himself, um, in Garland. So these are things that's really important, like their wellness, their well-being. So uh, they are being proactive on that end. So um, another thing that they discussed was the fact that we have about 254 authorized positions available for, you know, police dispatch. I think that's everybody total. Um, but 
only 234 of them are filled. So we definitely um, want to see more men and women in blue. I would love to see more men and women of color. Um, but our city um, police department is doing a pretty good job. I can name on a hand at least a few, you know, of color police officers for sure. So um, that's that. We'll head on over to the fire department. Hey, Chief Wilson. He's awesome. His wife is awesome too. Um, he was very big about making sure that um, he had a diverse stations, stations, I guess I'll say a group of people or whatever. Um, you know, he even reached out to me and said, Hey, if you know anybody in your community who may be interested in being a firefighter, please send them my way. You know, just taking that extra step to ask not just people who look like him, you know, but people around him of influence, you know, Hey, can you reach out and see maybe there may be an opportunity for someone out there. So that was, what's up. We'll be really quick on, um, Chief Wilson and the fire department, because I do not know. I um, They had a lot of different things. The um, South Mesquite Station will be getting built within these next few years. So that is something that's tracking. Um, this is the biggest part, you know, just staffing and making sure we have enough people. People are getting up in age. They are retiring um, people have hit that five to 20 year mark. So we want to make sure that we're just keeping a fresh group of people coming in because it's going to take eight people to complete staffing authorized by council, you know? So the new firefighters, it takes approximately 18 months for them to train all the way through. Whereas, you know, onboarding for a job may take two to three months and you're zoop, off to go, you know? So 18 months, we make sure that these people are trained. They also get trained to be um, responsive as paramedics as well. So if they need to do anything on that side, they don't have to wait till a paramedic gets there with the, with the um, ambulance. They're there on their fire truck. They can pretty much respond the same way. So I mean, the training that they go through is amazing and extensive, but we always need more people in the fire department. So if you know someone who is interested, um, definitely give them the information to the Mesquite Fire Department. This is Chris Sanchez, one of our assistant um, city managers. It was his birthday, so it was really cool. He got to work on his birthday. Fun, right? Um, but he is over. Um, he's talking about community engagement. And, you know, this is my jam. So I was super interested here. So their strategic goals is to actively engage with residents in both English and Spanish on programs, events, and issues within the city. And I absolutely love this because we are, of course, a majority minority community and Spanish speaking residents is at like 42% right now. Not just all the way Spanish speaking, but Hispanic residents. And I'm just going to make an assumption and say they are someone in their family speaks Spanish, right? And so like one thing that I've done to be proactive is I've started to take Spanish courses, basic Spanish courses, so I can at least say the basics. Hi, my name is Maxie Taylor. I'm a community liaison. Your kid does this. Have you heard about Lena? Have you heard about, you know, all of these different programs and events? And I don't want to chop off an entire group of people that I can't communicate with, you know, so making the Spanish Facebook page is something that they've been up to. Um, and getting a new website that can do English and Spanish. So I'm happy with that. It involves multiple departments. They're really creating initiative across the board, trying to make it to where we all can reach out to these different groups. And it, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it'll include the communications department, volunteering, engagement, and more. Their current strategies were... Um, to do creative things like the city council district meetings that happen. Um, and that'll give specific council members updates with their specific district. So it was like some one-on-one -on -one time with your council member um, where you can have those questions answered, 
where you can advocate for specifically your district on district issues. So those were another way. Town Hall Tuesdays, love Town Hall Tuesdays. They would take a particular program, department, um, goal, whatever the topic was for that month. And they'd have like a Town Hall Tuesdays where you had the opportunity to learn more about that specific topic for about an hour, hour and a half. Our council members are always there. Um, some of them are always there. But I mean, even in addition to that, whatever your topic um, that you like was about, you can at least talk to the person who is over that department, the person who is the director of the department. Um, community meetings, they had upcoming developments and specific neighborhoods concerns that were addressed in these community meetings. Um, some of them are like the neighborhood watch groups. Some of them are the national night out events that we have, things like that to kind of just um, help address it kind of within the community and build that trust between citizens. And then another one that I think people don't take as serious as they should are the customer feedbacks, the surveys that they had, the community survey, the customer survey. Each person, when they email you from the city of Mesquite down at the bottom, it has like the customer survey. Do those if you have good experiences. Do those if you have bad experiences. Do them, do them, because those surveys give data and that data lets them start having points of references for something if somebody is being unjust then you can't say you've had all of these experiences and none of them are documented like make sure you document things make sure you send those emails and send those responses the community surveys they had a budget survey and literally based off of the budget survey was adopted the 2023 survey, literally, you know, so they were speaking about only maybe 500 people had did the survey or had done the survey. And we have over 150,000 people in our community. You can follow the city of Mesquite government page, Texas government page, like that page. That is where they share that information. I make it a goal of mine. They post all throughout the week. I make it a goal of mine to check at least every Monday, when I watch the city council meetings, if I'm not there, you know, and every Thursday or Friday, I check every day, but every Thursday or Friday to see if you're going to miss something or if there's something coming up on the weekend, there's a daddy daughter dance coming up. There's so many things. The MLK parade was on there. People said they did not know that an MLK parade was happening. But when you follow the city of Mesquite page, it's a really good way to be as much involved they get everything from the entire city that's going on and put it on there so just be proactive and look for those things get involved with the surveys the my mesquite platform use it you're able to report issues um you're able to report if you need like a new trash can all these different things um is through the my mesquite platform so take a deep dive into that as well and then focus groups focus groups lead to boards lead to policy changes, you know, please be involved with these focus groups because when they're asking questions, they're not taking what they think, they're taking what the people said. And if there aren't people there besides the same five people who show up, then it's going to be extremely difficult for them to say, this is what the people want because it's the same two and three people who show up every time. Rant over, okay? <laughs> so, these were how they were creating community outreach. And then, boom, look at that girl right there. Um, then we head into kind of a game, kind of not, but it started um, green, yellow, red. And the green is for their top three priorities. We wanted to know their yellow top three priorities and then their red top three priorities. Like green being like immediately we're focused on it, um, yellow being, you know, within the next one or two years or so, and then green being, I mean, excuse me, and red being like within the next five to 10 years. I would like that to be kind of tracking on it, but, you know, it's not the biggest priority. And so they had different ones on each page. I was surprised. Um, well, they were really big on the roads, the development of South Mesquite, 
the development of the training facility for the firefighters and stuff, which I think would be impeccable. If you get something closer, we'll be able to cycle through more people and figure out who can be um, eligible to be firefighters. So um, that was interesting to see. Um, there was something on there that I would have chose that um, not a lot of people chose. And it was the church out at, um, is it, uh, it's not Samuel Farms, Historic Mesquite or something. I can't remember, but it's uh, basically a chapel. And for about $325,000, we can completely renovate that and start renting it out. Nobody necessarily put that that was one of their priorities on there. I would have made it a priority because that'll be a nice way to start generating that extra income that Cindy was talking about. But that's just me. But it was really good to kind of be able to see where their goals were. And Mr. Cliff summed it up really well. We're still creating a vibrant economy. That is our goal to promote a new businesses and existing businesses, you know, develop long term economic and land use for the targeted areas. They said by the time that they're done, that there's no more green space that's going to be coming available. Once they get done developing these houses and stuff, what you have is what you have. So I want to make sure that, you know, we utilize it to the best of our ability because it's not like we're going to be driving by more trees soon, you know? So making sure that like money is coming in with these projects, promoting revitalization of targeted retail and business centers, downtown. They've done so many things with downtown Alejandro's Heritage Plaza being right there. It's amazing. So um, just continuing to promote and grow downtown, um, getting that skilled workers group and creating a long term plan for the Mesquite Metro Airport goals. Y'all, I will be driving up, driving. I will be flying in and out of the Mesquite Metro area when I have money, money like that. I'll be flying private. So. Mark my words. Um, safe community, you know, which I'm all about. Having a safe community, maintaining the staffing levels needed in the police and fire department to provide effective response times. If nobody's there and they're out on another call, they can't get to the call that has just come in. So making sure we're staffed, you know, developing culture, communications, and systems of community policing that enhances the trust and public safety. We want, to con blah, blah, blah. we want to consider, we want to continue bridging the gap between the police and the public. There's so many things going on in media. There's so many um, just divisive things that are happening, so many unfortunate things that are happening. And it's kind of just putting a bad taste in everybody's mouth, you know? Um, but we want to really create our own culture within Mesquite and say, yeah, that's super unfortunate and it's wrong and we should stand up for that. And I'm thankful that in our community, we don't have that. Our police officers love our community. You know, I want us to have a pride. So ensure that the fire and police department have all of the advanced equipment, training, technology, um, all of the things that they need, right? And then create a culture of emergency preparedness throughout the city and community. Everybody being prepared, everybody being well equipped and knowing how to, you know, stop the bleed, how to, you know, perform CPR. All of these things are so valuable. And if we give our community these skills, I think it will be great because we'll be better prepared and, you know, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Quality recs and culture. So developing a long-term plan for parks, libraries, the arts. Um, I think the Adopt-A-Spot program is amazing for the parks. Being able to take ownership of these different park areas and saying, I commit to cleaning them at least six times a month. It will do a great help on uh, our janitors and everybody who has to go out to these parks because we have over 70 parks in Mesquite. So it's a lot to get to all of them every day. And I don't think that happens. So just being proactive, that's a great way. Identifying opportunities for green space and recreational amenities. You know, we have sand volleyball courts. We have pickleball courts. We have two amazing pools. We have another pool that's getting ready to open. There's so many great things in place. So quality recreation and culture 
improve recreational programming and partnerships. We have um, Cinco de Mayo. We have Juneteenth that happens. We have the Daddy Daughter Dance that happens. There's so many things that go on um, throughout the year to just encourage community and encourage culture uh, because Mesquite has culture, y'all. So um, this is my quick recap. It was supposed to be quick, but it's about 35 minutes. I don't think that's too horrible, but Again, I'm Maxie Taylor. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me on this recording. If you have any questions, you can email me at hello at Maxie, M-A-X-C-I-E, Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R dot com. I am in the city of Mesquite, Texas. So if you need me, you can reach out to me. Um, I am available for speaking engagements, quick questions, coffee, all that good stuff. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know how you would increase income in our city. Do you like the warehouses? I want to know. Give me feedback. So for 2023, I want to know what's your biggest problem, how you would fix it, and why you're happy to be a resident in Mesquite, okay? What's your biggest issue, how you would fix it? Because if we have problems with no solutions, those are just problems, right? So we want to create a solution as well. Your biggest problem your biggest solution, and why you're proud to be a resident. And that's important too, because every city, every place is going to have certain things that you just don't like about it. I've lived across the country and there have been places I just, there are things I did not like, right? And it ranged sometimes from a little things to too many things that I didn't like. That's why I'm back in Mesquite, because there are a few things that I don't like, but there are just a few. And the things that I love definitely outweigh the things that I don't. So why you're proud to be a resident, okay? All right, drop those comments. I will respond and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.